Hello, my name is Gene Gilmore. Uh, my birth given name is Eugene Rubin Akers. I don't want any money for what I'm doing because hopefully this video won't come out until after my death. So I have nothing to gain, nothing to profit by telling you what I'm going to tell you. And um, a lot of what I'm going to tell you is available online until they see this video and I'm sure things will start getting scrubbed um, as well as moon photos but anyway my father uh, in 1968 was stationed at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico I made notes on my computer um, so that uh, I wouldn't forget anything because uh, there's a lot of, lot of little things and stuff that I would forget so uh, these notes were made a long time ago. The original recording that my father made on his deathbed was um, um, destroyed in a fire. Um, but um, so this is my deathbed confession because now I'm dying of cancer. I've got cancer all over the place, and so and they don't know where it's coming from and. I don't know if they can stop it, but it don't look good. So I'm going to go ahead and make this video for Bart Seibrell. He knows not to do anything with it until uh, until notification of my death, uh, for which my son will respond to that. Okay, um, like I said, in 1968, my father was stationed at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico. Uh, we lived in Clovis, New Mexico. He was in the military police for over 20 years. And on his deathbed in 2002, we made a recording of what happened. Now, I already told you what happened to the recording. But it doesn't matter because all the facts are there. So it doesn't matter who's telling the story or whatever. Um, I will, at the end of the video, I'll supply a picture of my father, his badge, um, the flag of when they buried him. I'll show you some photos, photo, photos of my dad. Um, I was born in 1955. So in 1969, I was 14 years old. I vividly remember the uh, Apollo 11 coming down, landing on the moon, they're walking around and all that stuff. <laughs> anyway, I never, I never questioned that until, um, until my dad told me what he told me on his deathbed. And then I started doing a little... Nothing major, nothing, just surfing the web, I think they call it, surfing, surfing the web. Um, and a lot of that information is right there on the web. I mean, it, it, it verifies the story that he told me. Um, a good detective, a good one, would be able to uncover a lot more uh, of the story than I'm getting ready to tell you. So, please have at it. I've never known my dad to lie. Um, to get caught lying was worse than whatever it was you did to begin with. I remember going to school with long sleeve shirts on uh, to hide the purple welts. Yeah, you did not lie in our house, that's for sure. Dad had a real, <coughs> really bad attitude towards lying. Excuse me again. Um, okay, anyway, this is, this is the story that my dad told me on his deathbed. Project Slam Dunk was the name of, of this. Um, President Johnson in 1968, okay, um, in Cannon Air Force Base in 1968, he said by that time, by the time he got there, that there was already two large hangars that were connected. There was hundreds of dump trucks that came in and dumped sand and uh, uh, stone and uh, cement powder was powdered over the top of all that to make it look like a lunar landscape. They had men that fa fashioned it into a lunar landscape, he said. Okay, I've never known my dad to lie, so this all took me by surprise. You know, <laughs> what's that all about? So anyway, um, he said that in front of the, uh, the airplane hangars uh, was uh, pole framing, 
with uh, large canvas tents um, that was uh, concealing the inside of the staging area. Inside the staging area uh, on flatbed trucks uh, was on created um, the lunar lander that was assembled, reassembled back inside the hangars. Um, all of the walls were painted flat black and the ceilings as well. He was sworn to secrecy by the NSA and uh, they would put him in prison for breaking that oath. And when Dad saw the, the moon landing on TV, he cried. He said he knew um, that what he had witnessed on TV was exactly what they recorded in that hangar. Um, there was no reason for them to go flying around and everything. They had detailed high definition photos of the landing area. There was no reason for them to go flying around to a different landing area that almost exhausted their fuel except for drama because everything had gone so smoothly um, nothing you know so it had to be something anyway um, dad was one of three guards that guarded the uh, the inside of the front entrance there was a list of 15 people who could enter. No one else was allowed by order of President Johnson. And here is that list. And I gave it to Bart Seibrell as well. Uh, and he checked out a lot of these names and he says he can verify a lot of these people and what they do. Um, and I come across a couple myself. Anyway, President Johnson, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Alden, Werner von Braun, Robert Emenager, Gene Krantz, James Webb, Joe Kerwin, Dr. Thomas Paine, Glenn Looney, Dr. For Christopher Kraft, Dr. James Van Allen, General Trudeau, Trudeau, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Donald Simon, and Grant Norrie. Now, the only two that I ha really have information on is Robert Emenager. Uh Apparently, he did uh, a lot of uh, video work and stuff for uh, um, the Department of Defense. Um, so, the, the, the DOD did know him. Okay, And the other one was uh, Grant Norrie, N-O-R-R-A-Y, I believe, um, was... Uh, to the best of my to the best of my dad's knowledge was a uh, uh, like some FBI CIA NSA who knows something like that okay okay President Johnson only showed up for the first day of filming filming lasted for three days and the entire project was restored to original in other words the hangars were all taken apart the sand was all removed and so on and so forth okay um, Dad said there was a lot of building going on at the base so at the time, so sand and cement powder was never questioned. Um, I can see how they could smuggle that all in within everything else that's going on. Um, since 2002, I have dug up, at, or I already told you about that, the evidence for the moon line that I have found. Um, if you go to Google and go to uh, uh, Cannon Air Force Base website, they admit that President Johnson was there. The lunar lander was there. The astronauts were there. I also have uh, uh, verified some of the people on the list were there. I also verified there are a lot of uh, building going on in the base, just as he had told me. And all of this was going on at the same time, on the same date. Dad told me all these things father to son. Um, he also told me not to ever tell anyone what he had said, but he said on his deathbed that he had to tell somebody before he died because it was just too important not to tell. I sure as hell wasn't going to tell anybody. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I feared for my wife and, and me and my son, and I'll tell you why. Ever since I contacted Bart Sabrell, I think they may be listening to his phone once in a while because I never had any problems until I contacted him and told him 
my story. Now, people broke into my house two times. I was visited by men with black suits and I was told in no uncertain terms to drop this whole project not to say anymore to anybody or me and my wife and my son could disappear. You take that pretty literally after everything that's going on. Well, so I stopped contacting Bart and now I'm making this video that I'm going to send to Bart. Mr. Cybrell, excuse me. Bart's my brother, man. My brother in heart, my brother in, in Jesus, okay? Um, Bart, being a good friend that he is, called the police for me and told them about the break-ins. The two detectives that came out and everything questioned me and everything like that, I didn't give them any information at all. At the time, I thought it was a test from the guys in the black suits. I didn't say crap. Um, so all that all that went away and everything, but it definitely the two guys in the black suits were not the two uh, detectives that came out to question me about the break-ins. But thanks Bart. <laughs> <clears throat> but no, I don't want any help. I just I just want somebody to pick up where I left off and be able to prove with the information I've given and I'm trying to give as much as I can because I know that once I die I'm not going to be able to be asked any questions so that's why, why I tried to give you a little backstory too but um, that's about all I can think of I, I uh, my dad he raised me by the book I know he didn't lie to me and as I started seeing more and more of what he was telling me was true, I realized my dad wasn't lying. I lifted the lid off my dad's case, and you can see that his name is Cyrus Eugene Akers. He was born on July 17, 1933. He died on September 28, 2002. Uh, here's his badge, and I wanted to see if I could get as close as possible so that you can read the numbers on the bottom which are okay there it is zero seven five nine six zero seven five nine six That's my dad. And it must have been a really early picture because he's only got two stripes. So that, that was back in the 50s, I'm sure. Probably not long after I was born. And there he is. That's my father. My dad... He raised me by the book. I know he didn't lie to me. And as I started seeing more and more of what he was telling me was true, I realized my dad wasn't lying.